Hi there, I'm Isan Alicia and you're watching your new YouTube and Facebook Live. Today we are going to talk about how to rebuild trust in a relationship. In a, in a relationship where trust has been broken, either by cheating, lying, deceit, betrayal, withholding information, not meeting the expectation of your partner, or a number of reasons and how to rebuild trust in such a broken relationship is our topic for discussion today before jumping into the discussion of how to rebuild trust in a broken relationship uh, first of all we should know what trust really looks like in a in a healthy relationship trust in a healthy relationship means uh, it, sharing things with your partner openly communicating with your with your spouse, being vulnerable and feeling safe and secure in the company of your partner and being vulnerable. And that's how, uh, and supporting your spouse, these are the things, uh, these are the characteristics of healthy relationship. And when the trust is broken or is going to be broken, what are the signs of, of the lack of trust? Uh, then they are hiding, you hide things from your partner. Uh, you don't feel safe and secure in the company of your partner. There's no respect and there's no respect of, uh, of, uh, of respecting the boundaries of your partner. And there's no support system. You don't feel safe being vulnerable to your partner. And these are the signs of lack of trust in a relationship. And how to rebuild trust in a in a broken relationship is a topic for discussion today. And we are going to have a roundtable discussion. And my guests are Paul from Iceland. Hey, Paul. Hi. Nice and to see you. Melissa Amy from New York. Hey guys, New Jersey. How are you doing? New Jersey. Yes. New, New Jersey. Jersey. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank, thank, thank you so much for your time. And uh, before I, I, I'm going to start our discussion with you, Melissa. Okay. And what is this? What is this sound in the background? What is this? Oh, it's a fan. I think it's a fan. Okay. Should I shut it off? Uh, Let me shut yes, it off. Yes. All okay. right. Put me off for a second. Ask Hal first. I'll shut off the fan. Yes. Okay. okay. And okay. My question is that uh, how do you see that how what what should be the first step in rebuilding the relationship paul uh, yes i understand the question um to begin with you have to realize what you truly want what do you want to rebuild the relationship is this what you want when you have decided that you actually want to give it another try then um, you obviously need to get come together and in my opinion this is based on my opinion i don't have any um experience in rebuilding a relationship where there has been some sort of betrayal mm -hmm. so the i mean usually th there is a breakup and that's it you know there's no further discussion even though people say they want to talk they don't do it really not in my not in my experience so mm -hmm. let's say that both parties do really want to give it another try they will have to get together and define and tell what they actually want out of the relationship and this is this is really maybe the first time that you are asked you know what mm -hmm. your true expectations are in this relationship maybe nobody has asked you before and i i i mean in, in the in the time that lapses between the breakup or the separation being separated and until you start 
or make an effort to make things work again. It's an interesting period where you have a lot of me time. And in my experience, you grow a lot when you have this a long time because you're allowed to be in your own energy, in your own um, spirit. And you, you, you clear your head and you're not constantly bombarded by your partner's energy, whether it's, uh, it, I mean, whether it's good or bad energy, it's still not yours. And this is what I mean. I mean, in my case, for instance, I, I was all about trying to figure out what he wanted. So I, I, I sort of forgot myself. So given this me time, I was able to clear my head and be in my own energy to actually come to a decision what I truly wanted. And, and I know where I stand now. And this is why I think it's very important to pe for people to define the, the relationship. What you really want. Yes, both, both partners, not just one. Of what you want and where you want to be uh, in a relationship. And you have yeah. to be clear and give yourself a me time. And your goals yes. and objectives should be clear. And I mm. think the other, thing, uh, the, the other thing is very important is uh, is both parties should be on the same page uh, in terms of goals and objectives uh, whether when when it comes to rebuilding the relationship and mm -hmm. and they should uh, they should find out both parties individually they should find out uh, the underlying reason uh, and the causes of of the breakup because mm -hmm. if you are going to rebuild the relationship, you don't want to repeat the mistake. Mm -hmm. You have to find out those mistakes and your, those causes and try to remove them, try to mm -hmm. work out on them. What are you saying, Melissa? What should be, what are those steps in rebuilding the relationship? Can you, re uh, so, the, so the question you asked was the steps to rebuild the relationship? Yes, okay. how to rebuild trust in a relationship what should be the step? What should be the first step in rebuilding the relationship? Well, I think I, I would like to take that back a step. Um, to, to me, the first question would be um, about um, what you consider breaking trust is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, hold on one second. Um, yes, so I, I guess my first question would be, you know, what is your de definition of breaking trust? If you don't know, if you don't have a definition for yourself, um, and, and, you know, if you're not clear on that, uh, it, it could get, it could get a little confusing. So I guess my question would be, um, what, what do you feel is a betrayal? You know, cause there's many different types of betrayal when it comes to intimacy, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Just like withholding information, not meeting the expectations of your partner, and cheating, betrayal, lying. There are many things, and there are different types of relationships, and there are many types of uh, trust, betrayal of trust. Well, I get, to answer that, I would say uh, before I came on, I listened to Brene Brown, and she gave uh, that quote was so excellent. So I wanted to maybe mm -hmm. spin board off of that. Um, she wrote, um, she quoted Charles Veltman, and he said, trust is choosing to make something important to you vulnerable to the actions of someone else. Mm. Let me repeat it one more time. Trust mm. is choosing to make something important to you vulnerable to the actions of someone else. Mm. And her second part, his second part, Charles Veltman was, distrust is um, what I've shared with you that is important to me is not safe with you. So um, it, what I would say first, it, it's being safe. The first, well, the first thing actually is um, to, that's something important to you that you make it vulnerable to someone else. So there can be betrayal because there isn't even the individual people being vulnerable to one another. They're playing games. So you're not even in the, your foundation's wrong. So with everything, everything, everything in my life, the foundation, the roots, have to be strong. So you have to be willing to be vulnerable and you're going to have your trust betrayed. There, there's, I think people 
think if they get to a level of actualization, they do enough shadow work that they're not going to be betrayed. And that's not the case. So you're going to be betrayed. You know, it's inevitable. You're going to be betrayed. So to me, it'd be like, well, how are you going to deal with that? Mm -hmm. And then how are you going to minimize it? You know, so it, so it happens less next time. But even that's not 100% because you're not a mind reader, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I was thinking. I don't know if it answered the question, though. I don't think it answered it, did it? Yes, well, no, so it did. And, uh, yeah, it, to some extent, it is right. And I discussed it in uh, a lead. I mentioned it all yet, that mm -hmm. what trust looks like and what trust doesn't look like. And being vulnerable, supporting, and yeah, open communication with your partner these are the these are the fundamental uh, characteristics of, of of a trust and what trust doesn't look like is you don't feel safe and secure in the company of your partner and you don't feel safe uh, being vulnerable to your partner and I, I think you also said the same thing and uh, it was good and these are the uh, and it is absolutely right so what should be the first step when we are going to rebuild the relationship the first thing is, uh, to me, I would think, I'm sorry, I jumped in. Do you want to rebuild it? And where do you want them placed after? You know, you want to forgive. Um, you, you know, the more you hang on to bitterness, um, we've seen that with people. I'm, I'm sure many of you have seen that with people who hang on to resentment and bitterness. And I under, and many, and a lot of times people are hanging on to resentment and bitterness, and it's justified. You know, I'm not saying for every case, but there is, in a lot of cases, there is a big chunk of that that is justified mm -hmm. but because they're not releasing the resentment and they're not releasing their bitterness they get more of the same you know so that, that that's the way i look at it um how do you rebuild it you decide if you want to um they have to be accountable meaning they have to apologize they have to apologize and mean it sincerely and show you with changes and those changes are going to be slow because you need to see consistency over time you know, it's not one time, well, they did one thing and now everything's fine. No, it has to be rebuilt. You know, it's, it's a bridge that has to be rebuilt. Yes, indeed. And you have to both decide and you want to do it. Don't have one person yeah. decide they want to do it and the other person doesn't because it's going to be sabotage, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, a, just like a clap, you use both hands. Both parties uh, mm -hmm. should be on the same page. And you're uh, there when you talk about the broken relationship, then there's a there's one party who has done wrong, and there's part one party is a uh, is a vulnerable party, I would say, and the person who the party who has done the wrong, it should apologize first. This is I, I think in my view it should be the it should be the first step. Yeah, or there there are many ways to rebuild it, and it, it is one of the steps that. The one party who has done wrong, who has done cheating, or who has betrayed the trust of the other person, and he should go first and apologize to the person who was hurt. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, well, that sort of goes without saying. And, and, and I think very early on, when you discover the betrayal, I mean, you go through this. You... We in Iceland, we call it shoveling your way through the snow. I'm just going to shut off the coffee maker. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I apologize. All right. Oh, no problem. And, and, and whenever I go through this, I mean, I, I just shovel my way through it in, in a comparatively short time. I'm sort of through it within three or four days. And then, and then starts the um, rebuilding of my own, um, of my um, self-respect, really. Yes. So, so you're building yourself up. You have to, I mean, that's all, the only thing you have. So you, you're going to try to strengthen your self-image and uh, rebuilding your own, um, yeah, self-esteem. Um, and, and you can never go around that. Never mind however fast you get together again. You have to rebuild your own self-esteem. This no way around it nobody else is going to do it and this is why i think it's a, sort of a blessing to be separated i mean in my case it's five weeks now and it's it's a marvelous time and it's that 
thing of freedom and it is it's like being single again which of course it essentially is mm -hmm. but it is this me time is very important for me because i've been you know single most of my life yeah i've been in a relationship i've never been formally engaged so um so it's it's very important to start with yourself and then when with the other partner that actually told you that we were not broken up we had broken up for a while which means separated i don't know the def definition but uh and then you you get together and and like i said before you have to be do you know it takes two hands to clap and um and know what you want and and you have to ask difficult questions and you know you, you there's no way around that either you have to ask questions you never dared to ask before and that's a challenge so i look at this me time this whatever how many weeks i'll have to 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 understand what i actually want and to prepare myself to ask very hard difficult questions that might make everything blow up into my face i have to have the courage to do it and i also have to have the courage to tell the other guy what i don't do not want it takes courage yes. that's yes. what i'm trying to say yes and Melissa, the underlying cause and the underlying reason of cheating and betrayal is also important because why the person has turned on? What could be the reason? Whether he wanted to just wanted to cut off the relationship and he didn't know how to do it and just he just simply cheated or it was simply a dumb mistake. So these both things... They, I think it could be a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't. I thought you were finished with the question. I am. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Please continue. I, I think there can there there's many reasons. Um, some could be just be a serial cheater, and they have their own um, insecurities, and that's a way that makes them feel very important. They need constant attention, and if they're not getting the attention, they have to get it, or they they have attention here, but they want it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They want. They want, they like the, they like the consistency of having someone home or having that primary relationship. Um, but they also like, uh, like the newness of a new relationship or that desire piece that, um, maybe may or may not be lacking in some cases, you know, there's cheating and they're, you know, they're, they seem like a very great relationship, you know? Um, so I, I think it depends first on the person who the, the person would just might be a cheater. If someone's been a cheater before you, and especially if they're a serial cheater, you know, I think most people will think, well, I'm different. I'm different. This Once they mm -hmm. meet me, that's it. And um, I, I think that's pretty naive to think that. Um, I'm not saying that you couldn't give it a shot, but wow. You know, to me, I think that would kind of be a deal. That would, well, that would be a deal breaker to me. I wouldn't even attempt it. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's, uh, I'm, I'm not risking, I'm not going against those kind of odds. Um other reasons could be uh, like um, not putting the same effort that you did in the beginning, um, not seeing each other, feeling a disconnect over time. And then, you know, a lot of times there's a I joke, there's a joke around, uh, you know, there's a joke in the workplace that you have um, a work husband and a mm -hmm. home husband, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. they're very intimate relationships at work that people don't realize there's a lot of um, intimacy sharing that's, that probably would make their significant others um, upset. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're getting some kind of satisfaction out of being, uh, you know, more intimate with their, you know, their work husband. So there's a lot of ways it creeps in. It creeps in slowly. Mm -hmm. You know, you might be spending a lot of time at work. You might be at work, you know, working 15, 16 hour days. You don't really have that much in common to talk to your spouse because you're busy and then you're sharing, you um, all the household duties at home and you're tired, but you have your work husband, you know, your work husband is having trouble with his mm -hmm. wife who, under the same yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. So there's many reasons why that could happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why it is important to uh, find out the exact cause of it. And while doing so, uh, Paul, I think the history of the person 
is also important when you are going to be involved in a relationship then you should uh, dig around a little bit about the person you're going to be emotionally attached to uh, because you don't want to be end up uh, uh, in a broken relationship in a relationship at the end of the day you will be the person who is going to be hurt is you so you have the right to know about the person about his about his or her past yes and and in most cases i think you know a lot about um the uh, your partner it's usually not a problem to exchange into infos about our past that's not an issue and i've even i i've even listened i mean when i mean he talks freely to his friends and all that in front of me the and and at least two exes that he's more well, wait three two Italians and, and one uh, Polish that lives in Ireland or lived in England or Ireland, I can't remember. But he's now back in Poland. So it's it's always been quite open about the exes and where they are and what they're doing. And, you know, so it was never any uh, secret towards them what my estranged guy was doing in Iceland, but it was always about the family that he kept totally away from it. So it's sort of a split. I, I, I feel for him to be in this situation from this culture where it's okay to be open about your sexuality towards the exes and friends from that community, but you have to keep it a total secret from your family. I, I totally get what he's going through. And this split reality takes a lot out of you. And I know it. I mean, I was 37 when I came out. He will be 37 in October. So I can't even, I can't even say that, oh, it's about time he came out because I was his age when I came out. Yes, I didn't. I hadn't slept with a guy for two years before that. But still, when I started seeing a guy regularly, I had to come out with that towards the family. That was that's how we Icelanders do it. But I have no idea. I, I'm not into this Mediterranean uh, family whatever you call it i mean it's 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 very straight jacket i mean to a scandinavian this is this is ancient this is archaic this is something that we went through like three or four hundred years ago we, we don't understand it now yes and there's also a and cultural split and uh, melissa what about what do you think about hiding things when you are secretly talking going out or when you have to call you go out and you don't talk and these are the these are the common things that uh, the people do and you give reason to the to your partner to not to trust you well i would like to um answer that question to the earlier question it is important that you do due diligence. I call it due diligence. It is important that you do mm -hmm. diligence on who you're planning on spending more time with and, and who you can, if you, especially if you plan to share a bed with somebody, do your yes. due diligence. You, you, you know, that's what we're sharing. That's what we're saying mm -hmm. about doing even, even, you know, it, it is pretty relevant what you would inject into your body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think of it that way. It is important to do your due diligence. You know, you want to know their character. You want to know, you know, you know, people want to believe that they're always different. You know, so it's like buyer beware. You know, if you hear a bunch of stories before, uh, you know, yeah. women do that all the time. Women do it all the yeah. time. They'll hear a horrible story about, you know, a man and then they'll go date him. And the same thing yeah. happens to them. And I'm like, well, I could have told you that. You know, we saw it all over Facebook. This person dated how many people was all train wrecks, but you're different. You know, like never yeah. assume that. Like, you know. That's uh, yes. That's you know, why. Yes, yeah, the history is also important because it, it gives you the pattern how things have been going and what could happen, and that's why the, you should look out 
before going to meet any person or before going to actively involved in a relationship you should build mm -hmm. the past the past is important and uh, well, the next the question closure. is the closure yeah. of the past you yeah. want to look yeah. and see how they ended with this person yeah. mm -hmm. if they blow up the whole place you know like there's lawyers everything that there's all this anger and mm -hmm. um in bitterness and they're fighting over you know the furniture you know the, like for, is that something you want because the person you date is not the person you know that you may divorce or end the relationship so be mindful of that mm -hmm. you know it's good due diligence you know yeah, yeah there are uh, small steps like oh, is he giving is he secretly talking with you you are going to be involved okay it's a first day second day and you are going to see a person uh, uh, keep observing things like is he open is he not open why is he call why is he away when he has to call or is he secretly chatting or when you ask him how does he react and what are his uh, impressions or expressions on his face while talking to other people and these are the small things uh, they they tell you about the behavior of the other person yes. isn't it right yeah they those show you people show you with their actions whether you're important or not to them it's their actions it's not their words people can say a lot of words and nice flowery mm -hmm. things and tell you they love you after a day and that's a warning mm -hmm. sign anything too quickly is a warning sign um, any too late is also a bad sign I'm sorry. <laughs> too quickly is, too is a bad sign. Yes, yeah, too, too quickly, quickly is a bad is a, sign. Yeah, too late is also a bad sign. Yes, no. Well, too yeah, they're waiting. You know, like if you have to keep, if they don't want to progress the relationship. Well, sometimes certain people just are not committal, or maybe you. You know, but the, you might want to find that out. It's important. You don't want to be in there for five years to figure out that they're really not a committal person, or that it's not you. You know, so those are signs that you have to pay attention to in the beginning, and and you know, be able to, to call them out, but also do your own inner work. It's not just your insecurity, you know, because we, a lot of times you're damaged from your past relationship. You haven't healed from that. Now you're jumping into another one with all your damage. And now you're projecting things on the new relationship because you were betrayed in your last relationship. So you got to heal it. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, not, you know, you got to work on it. You got to work on it. You got to be honest yeah. with yourself. There's a scale you need for yourself, not just for the other person, for yourself. Because you can't yeah. trick. You know, eventually you could you could put on all the acts you want, but eventually the mask falls off. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Paul, what do you think about forgiveness? Forgiveness when you're going to rebuild a relationship. Forgiveness is also important. As um, to me, that's very easy. It's very easy to forgive. It's very easy to forget. To forget really, maybe too easy for me. I don't know. I mean. Whatever happened, it happened for a reason. And the main thing is that we, I mean, I think both partners, I mean, both parties have to evolve into something bigger and stronger than before. And again, it's about both partners, not one. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, even the, the partner that betrayed you in some way, yes, he, he definitely has to change and he has to, has to realize in what way he needs to change. But the, the other party has to change too. Because he has to he has to set boundaries. He has to understand that he has to look after himself or herself. And he, he maybe perhaps I, I'm guessing here in, in the second try you probably have to have clear orders to begin with like i think you talked about this melissa about giving it ample time to uh and maybe it won't be the same but it it may become healthier because yeah. the borders are clearer because to be honest i had i mean if you'd asked me 20 years ago you know are your borders clear and then i was you know, making an effort with a guy that now lives in Spain and wants me to come over there. That was 1999 or 98, 99, 2000. And if people had asked me there or, and then, are your borders clear? I would not have understood the question. I had no idea about any borders. I thought you were supposed to be one 
you know, evolve into one clutch of personalities. I had, I had, I was absolutely clueless at 43, 42, 43, what relationship were about. I was absolutely clueless. So at least I have evolved very slowly, I admit, but I have moved a bit closer to some sort of personal health. We can call it that too. I think changing is really inevitable mm -hmm. after um, after a betrayal. It has to change. So it's either going mm -hmm. to um, flourish or it's going to devolve, evolve mm -hmm. or devolve. Um, yeah. And that only that's only and it has to be there has to be accountability. There has to be, um, you know, really sincerely meaning it. Not well, I did it. It's ten, you know, it was it this happened? Yeah. Blah blah blah. If you do that, it's it's gonna fail. Or you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna harbor resentment and bitterness because of course. It yeah it yeah. has to be you have, to be authentic. There has yes, to be and you have to after and you have to accept your mistakes. A person who has done wrong yes. he has to accept oh, yeah. his mistakes, why he has done wrong. As long as you are defending yourself or defending your mistakes, then you are not ready yet. No. But I had another thought yeah. on that too, because we're mm -hmm. making the we're making the betrayal of you know I'm assuming it's sex, okay? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we'll say sex, but it could be it could manifest in many ways. So many other things. So so we're just looking at. It seems like the focus is the person who uh, did the betrayal, but I don't believe that is the case. You know, in most mm -hmm. cases, the other person is either closed off, you know, either verbally abusive or um, detached. Mm -hmm. um not interested in the person that sought some not, you know, not, not showing attention not so that's got to heal and that's got to change and that mm -hmm. other person has to recognize what they did to contribute to it because mm -hmm. we're just looking at the person who cheated that's in, in therapy we, we call that like the identified patient you know the yeah. person who's acting out is the identified patient there's a reason and in, in when you do family therapy the identified patient is just the person reflecting what's going on in the house they're the scapegoat, you know, they're, they're the bad, you know, they're the evil doer in the home when, you know, if you look at it, there's a whole bunch of dynamics going on mm -hmm. underneath that. I think yeah. if, if we move on to the reason why yeah. people cheat yeah. or yeah. which of course is, I mean, or, or, or betray each other. I think the strongest reason <laughs> I'm, I'm just talking because when I look back, I think the strongest drive is to getting back at each other. Oh, you, yes. you, it's a reprisal. It's it's getting back at the other person. And it, it like Melissa said, it, it can be lack of um, passion because the other partner, the proclaimed victim, has been feeling less passionate about, and it has second doubts. And the, the, the other party that he senses that, but, but he doesn't understand what's going on and he doesn't know how to react to it. And you know, it's the lack of communication because obviously yeah. the it. I mean, the relationship is, is in dire straits but nobody's talking about it openly. Nobody's talking about the elephant in the room. Yeah. And, and, and then yeah. people start getting back at each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and I, yeah. I, I, quite, I believe that that's some proclaimed betrayals are getting back at the other party. And that's a boomerang. Yeah. It's a boomerang. I'm also it, boomerang back to you. Yes. Yeah. Open communication is the key. It is not easy to forgive a person. It is easy for some people, but it is not easy for the for the other person, uh, for some some other people. And when you are not ready, I think when you are not ready to forgive your partner, then it means you're not the 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 rebuilding process is not going to work. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, while uh, talking about forgiveness, the other thing is. There's uh, when you don't have to use the betrayal or the past or the uh, uh, the the thing whatever it is you 
you were hiding things and now you are rebuilding it. Or you don't have to use the past as a punchline to every time you're going to uh, involve or whatever you are going to have a fight or small thing or small argument. You don't have to use the, uh, uh, the past as a punchline to show the other person that he was uh, he has done wrong. Well, I, w- I would like to go back to the forgiveness. You know, forgiveness mm-hmm. is really, again, and I know that's cliche. I really didn't get it till this year. But forgiveness yeah. is releasing the negative ang- anger or like a lot of people, you know, stalking the person, um, spending your time investing in what they're doing, what they're spending their time on, like, you know, trolling them. You don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, while you're doing that, that, you want to focus on you. Um, okay. Forgiveness is for you. It's for you to heal. And it, you know, for me, I don't know. Um, at this stage, I don't know. I could, I could probably, you know, forgive an emotional affair, but I don't think. I mean, you never know till you go. Like, I haven't had a physical. I haven't had anyone physically cheat on me that I'm aware of. Um, in in a very long period of time, you know, maybe when I was younger, I did. You know, not a long period of time. I don't know if I could forgive that. To be honest with you, um, I don't know if I could forgive physical contact between. Um, and rebuild after someone f- physically did that, like had sex with somebody else. I, I don't know. Like I, I would have to really, that would be really hard for me. I could forgive them and I could release it. Um, and again, that goes back to a belief in yourself because most people hang on to somebody. There's an abandonment fear. There's an abandonment. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't believe they're worth anything without this person. Mm-hmm. You know, so I wouldn't feel that way. You know, if someone cheated on me, you know, I'd be like, oh, OK, you know, like, you know, I know my value. That's that's fine. We're good. And really work on that. You know, you really have to work on that. Um, but if you, you know your value, then it makes mm-hmm. that a lot easier. And you could, you know, I wish them well. I, I wish them well. Um, you know, moving on. And uh, I'm going to open space. And I'm going to mm-hmm. I'm going to heal from that. But it depends what like it really depends on the person, because. There are relationships that have worked out very strongly after a physical, someone physically cheating on another, but you know, mm-hmm. there's all different types of betrayal and certain people, what certain people would accept is different than what other people would accept. It's not a cookie cutter. You know, everybody's no. different. We're all individuals. So that's really, all relationships. what does it mean to you? You know? Yes. And forgiveness is not for the other person. It's forgiveness is for yourself and Mm -hmm. you are forgiving yourself so you could heal yourself and it's cutting the link if you need to like you see people drawn out with divorce for like 10 years you're you're connected in this hostile energy with someone Mm -hmm. you know you're you're back and forth you know looking at their page they're looking at your page you're fighting you're going through their things you're you're asking people they're they're i mean that's a connect bring i would cut that link you know Mm -hmm. right cut it cut the link you know Yes. Yes. And uh, Paul, how do you, what, 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 what should be your final thoughts in rebuilding the relationship? Um, I mean, we would have to get together to talk about where we're heading. Oh. What will be, what will actually keep us together? And after whatever, two or three years together, you should have some idea where we should be able to talk about where we want to go. What are we going to work at? Where do we want to live? How How is the life going to be? And, and down to practical matters as well. And um, um, I find that, yeah, practical matters are boring, I have to admit, but but the the uh the romantic ones are are very important you have to know what you actually want from the relationship what is going to keep it going and and you have to, both of you have to work at it there's no way out of that and then you have to have the courage if it doesn't work out and this this is a very tricky thing for me to have the courage to cut the cord and say this is not going anywhere i can't do this anymore that would be a new one for me i've never left them yes i i did ask one to leave and he did that was the, the guy that's now in spain and um 
but usually they le left me and so i've never had to do the dirty work of uh, you know split do the splitting up i've always been you know the apple in the tree that i uh, you you take me from the tree and then you leave me back you know you sort of oh. i don't need you anymore I, I i'm fine with that because then i get more me time but i i have to shoulder responsibility of how i feel and if it it's going to work for me or not and if it's not working i'm i cannot allow myself to stay in a relationship that's not doing anything for me i've been there before i've done it i should never do it again i lived with a guy for eight years i knew when i looked back i should have cut it you know and and split up after three years so i wasted five years staying in a relation living with a guy that was actually this was a toxic thing <laughs> but i did it because i didn't i wasn't responsible for myself well, melissa where are your final thoughts in rebuilding the relationship rebuilding um yeah. all right so we're just re the question is just rebuilding it no, no. Uh, what are your final thoughts in rebuilding the relationship? Rebuilding, okay. Because, you just, know, the rebuilding means that you're willing to try again. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not... Yes. At the, okay. where, trust has been, where trust has been betrayed. Okay, so you, number one, you're going you're gonna to first rebuild. If, if you have a betrayal, you're going to think to yourself, was I really fulfilled in this relationship? You want to do an audit, mm -hmm. you know? You're and you're not looking at the incident. You're looking prior, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're gonna look at it. Do, do I really? Let me take a let me take some time. Like so, what you know? People have an abandonment complex, so they feel like oh, they're back. They have roses, you know. Like you know, they they left the other woman for me. You know, I'm important. They go back to that. Recheck. Make sure this is something. Really do some deep work and think. It, do I really want to go back? Was I happy? What were the good things? What were the things um, that I didn't like? This is a time that I, you know, I, I need to stop and reflect. So you need to take time for yourself to reflect on that. Um, and then accountability, you know, there has to be accountability for the betrayal. They have to under, they have to understand and reflect how they hurt you. Okay. They have to be able to communicate to you that they understand how they hurt you. So that you can understand that they, they feel what you felt. And until that happens, you can't move forward. They have to feel it. They need to empathetically feel what you went through. Because then because then you're then you know they have it. You know they got it. You know that they understand how much they hurt you. Um and you need to transform. You you know, you need to transform in the relationship. You know, you need to see some communicate. It doesn't have to be okay, we decided we're gonna work. No, you could date again. You know, or, or, and it depends on your situation, not every situation is similar, but you can, you know, you know, try again slowly and see, not get yourself completely back in. And now you're back to the way the patterns were before, mm -hmm. you know, you, you want to put your boundaries back up and, and you'll let a little bit down as it goes, if that's what you choose to do and then see, and if you're seeing the same patterns again, you're going to get another lesson. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get another lesson? You know, so that's, um, that's something to think about. And then if it doesn't work and you decide, hey, I see the patterns again, um, you want to enter in that you want the best for each other, no matter how it turns out. And you have to work towards that. Um, you're not in it to prove him wrong or let me catch him cheating. I'm going to let him back and I'm going to watch him and see if he does anything again. And, blah, blah, you know, and then I'm getting him for everything. You know, uh, what you put in, what you put out, you get back. You know, there's there's no cheating that. Um, if, if you're only back in it because you want to get more from that person or make them suffer, um, that's going to come back to you ultimately. So you, you'd be best serving your time to work on yourself, figure out how you're going to how you're going to disentangle from this person and open space for something new. Yes. And my final thoughts, absolutely right, Melissa. My final thoughts are open communication, forgiveness. To find it out, the ex finding out the exact reason and causes of, and also knowing the history of the person before yes. uh, jumping into the relationship is also very important. I think it, it is one of the most important things that you have to know the person before going to be emotionally or physically involved with him because you don't want to, if there is a pattern, if you see a pattern of 
uh, of train wreck, then stay away from it. Uh, you, uh, many people do that. They think that if this is time, this time is going to be different, but it doesn't. And that's how you can rebuild relationship. And I think we have uh, discussed, we have touched some of the uh, most important questions. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comment box below. Uh, I'll answer it to you. Melissa is Melissa Amy is a professional therapist and psychologist. If you have any questions, oh no, I'm a therapist. I'm a licensed yes. clinical social worker, not a psychologist. Yes, yes, psychologist. And no, not a psychologist. It's different. Yeah. Okay. Clinical psychologist or yes. A social no, worker? no, no. Licensed clinical, clinical social worker. Yeah. I'm a licensed therapist, clinic. but it's a different yes. term. I don't. I wouldn't. It's different levels of education for a psychologist. Mm -hmm. Yes. And please do write, reach out to Melissa. She is a professional person. She, and she would help you and uh, or Paul or me or anyone. Uh, just thank you, Gary. Thank you, other people. Thanks, Mason, for your comments. And uh, thank you. Have a good day. Good afternoon, wherever you are.